I'd be surprised if I've endorsed you for anything because I, I just don't. <laughs> In this section. Everyone else endorses me. I don't endorse anyone else. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Career Brand Story, a podcast that provides expert career coaching every week. I'm Jeremy Tudor. And on today's show, we're talking about LinkedIn career personal branding. LinkedIn is such an important tool in today's job market and maybe even more important or heading in the place of importance of outbeating the resume. And let me explain why. As a recruiter, it is very likely that I would find you on LinkedIn before I ever saw your resume and I would either share your profile or print that profile off into a PDF version walk it over to a hiring manager and say, are you interested in this person? And if so, then I would reach out to you via LinkedIn to be able to get maybe that more formal resume and to start a conversation with you. So the fact is, is that I may not have ever even laid my eyes on your resume. I may have only seen you through LinkedIn uh, and understood who and what you're about simply through your profile. 100% of recruiters and hiring managers are using LinkedIn as a recruiting tool. It's a powerful tool um, for anybody in the recruitment business to be using. And so as job seekers, it's really important that we have our profile 100% um, on brand um, to be noticed in that. Today, there is currently 660 million registered users with over 303 million of them being active on a monthly basis. So today we're going to get really practical. We're going to go to our profiles and we're going to go from top to bottom, talk about what each section does, why it's important and what you need to put into that. So again, if you have uh, a notepad, a piece of paper, uh, construction paper, uh, pen, highlighter, crown, whatever you're using. Uh, make sure that you take some notes as we go through today's podcast and get really practical on your LinkedIn profile. I'm glad to have back Jeb Graff, our commercial photographer and creative consultant, and also McKay Leslie, our chief of staff here at Career Brand Story and Jeremy Tudor. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Happy to be here as always. Ditto. That's, That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should work on our intro lines here. Well, let the people get to know you a little bit. Uh, yeah, I never know how I'm doing. It's always kind of a hard question, you know. I'm just going like from one thing to the next, and I'm not really centering. Not checking in with yourself. Are you an Enneagram out. four? I am an Enneagram nine, wing one, huh. and. I I hear that we nines, when we're in, a, in stress, we go to the six, which means I'm just scared of everything. So I don't want to answer that question. Well, nines are so concerned about how everyone else is feeling. It's hard to know how you're feeling. That's true. I'll, I'll go with that. So, Jeremy, I am feeling however you're feeling today. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm always thriving. So that's great. Um, speaking of the Enneagram, my wife, Christy, um, at the end of this week is headed to Nashville. Um, she is an Enneagram guide and is doing a year long cohort with Hunter Mobley. And uh, so we'll be over in Nashville while she attends um, their next cohort session. And coming in our next quarter, um, Christy will be coming onto the podcast and walking us through the Enneagram. So oh, that's if awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. And um, so stay tuned for that coming up. There'll be um, several episodes because there's a lot. To, there's nine numbers. So I don't know how exactly we're going to do that, whether we'll do nine episodes or or that. But there's a lot of um, great information around that. Well, as That's a producer awesome. and content person, it makes me happy because that means we have at least nine episodes <laughs> checked off. <laughs> That's at the right. bare minimum. We aren't even getting into wings and stress yeah. and all that stuff. So, yeah, well, um, and as soon as everybody, uh, is introduced to Christy, um, it will officially become the Christy Tudor podcast show. I'll be kicked off and you'll never hear about me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. So I'm excited she, about that. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, today we're talking about LinkedIn and career personal branding. Again, 303 million active users every month. That's a lot of noise to cut through. And so again, 
what we were talking about in our last episode is that the focus or most job seekers tend to have this hyper focus on the resume, which is an important marketing tool, but again, it's going to get read in eight to 12 seconds. Um, LinkedIn is that second part in the career brand story method that is really important to have. Um, we know today that 100% of recruiters and hiring managers, um, and I know when I say that statistic, people are like, really 100%? Yeah, I, I, I've talked to recruiters who, you know, they're saying that even um, staffing agencies, if you talk to recruiters who, who aren't working directly even for the corporation, the feedback that I've gotten is that their clients are asking for the resume and their LinkedIn profile information. So the, these, these clients are wanting to see both things. So it's really that important that your LinkedIn profile is up to date and really communicating your brand. And the mistake that a lot of job seekers made is that they got on LinkedIn maybe like 10 years ago uh, and they copied and pasted their resume verbatim um, or they've never gone back and really updated it. Um, and so it's not aligned. It doesn't tell the same story that your resume that you spent all this time updating is telling. And so it's really important for you to be able to make sure that they're aligned, that they're communicating the same career brand story consistently um, as people will review that. And at the end of the day, it's really an opportunity to help you tell a different part of your story that you don't do in the resume uh, and, and, and deliver that personalized marketing so that you really can stand out from the rest of the crowd that might be applying to that job. So, if you haven't done anything with your LinkedIn profile, um, if you're one of those people who just copied and pasted uh, several years ago, um, if you um, just got on it and you threw a couple of things on there and you've never visited again, uh, go log in, find your password. I did this with my wife, Christy, actually this weekend. We went and updated hers um, and hers was so old. Uh, it, had, it, had, it had the oldest job ever. Uh, one time she was a barista at Starbucks is what it had on her LinkedIn profile. So we cleaned up her LinkedIn profile this weekend, but we had to start by going and finding her password. So go log in, find your password. And if you go to your profile, um, I'm going to go to my profile on my LinkedIn and we're going to go top to bottom through this whole thing. All right, everybody ready for that? Let's do ready. it. Ready. All right. Um, so, um, Let's dive through this. When you get to your profile page, um, so first of all, if you're trying to get to that, um, you will see up at the very top, there's a dashboard in LinkedIn, and you will see um, several different options there. Um, there's like a little house that represents home. That's going to show your main feed of people that you're connected with, just kind of like Facebook um, it's just a story feed that's going on of what people are posting, commenting, liking, and sharing. The next thing is going to be um, to like people, and that's kind of showing connections. So um, you'll get notifications up there if people are requesting to um, connect with you, and you can click on that and you can see who's connecting with you. They'll also give you suggestions of people that you can connect with. That's great as well. Then you'll see a briefcase. That is the job and career section. So if you click on that section, uh, you will be able to see different jobs that are being posted on LinkedIn and you can apply to those jobs. Then you'll see a message. Um, this is where any of your LinkedIn messages are going to come to. You can click on that and you can answer, send messages. There's also a little bell. And this is just for all kind of notifications that go on on LinkedIn. Maybe someone viewed your profile, someone liked um, a post um, or some other type of notification that you can see. And then you'll see a little picture of you. Um, or if you don't have a picture, uh, it'll just be blank. But that little circle, if you click on that, what you will be able to see is view profile. Click on view profile. And this is going to take you to your profile page of what people can see on your profile. The first thing that you're going to see, and this is kind of similar to the resume, is what people are going to look at first um, is that they're going to see the top third of this resume. 
uh, top third of the LinkedIn profile. So not your resume, LinkedIn profile. So this is where, um, you know, you want to make sure that this really captures people's attention right away. So you have the ability um, to change the banner. Um, LinkedIn has a standard banner that kind of looks like a star constellation um, in their uh, blue color logo color of LinkedIn. But um, for LinkedIn, they give you a kind of a little pencil shape um, that you can click on in different sections. And that gives you the ability to be able to um, change that. Now, if you go to like my profile and you'll visit, you'll see that it says go beyond. Um, we have a graphic. We, we change our banners across our social media channels that represent the theme that our quarter is in. Um, I have someone who does that and makes it look really cool for me. But um, so if you don't have that, um, you know, you could choose to do just a solid background. Um, LinkedIn also gives you some options that you can use. Um, a lot of people have done their like the city they live in. They'll find a, a city landscape that kind of represents them. Um, or maybe it is a picture. I've had a client who really likes the beach. And so they used a beach picture. Um, this is just a way to be able to kind of let a little bit of your personality, um, you know, and kind of shine through and add some color to it. Um, again, you can just come back and, and do a solid color or you can just leave it and let it be the kind of standard constellation. As I think well. that my uh, header is currently an aerial shot of a market, a food market in Indonesia, and it makes me feel a lot cooler than I actually am. I did go to the market and take the picture, but I'm not constantly traveling the world. I wish <laughs> I was. <laughs> Why is it not the go beyond theme? Uh oh. Because I'm a bad employee. <laughs> We're supposed to be branded across the company. <laughs> But I have to look cool. <laughs> the Go Beyond theme is cool. The Go Beyond theme is really cool. I love it. I think it's my favorite banner we've had so far. Yeah. So <clears throat> lots of different options you can do here with the banner. The, the important piece here on a graphic side really comes down to your profile pic. Um, Jeb, do you remember the statistics around the profile pic? Oh, my goodness. Um, not off the top of my head, but I can come back and tell you in a minute. Because I have. Yeah. So um, 14. it's 14 times. Is it 14 times? 14 times more likely to get your profile viewed if you have a picture versus if you don't. All right. We're going to fact check that one. But yeah. um, knowing to have your profile pick um, does increase the likelihood of your profile being looked at. And so it's just really important that you have just a really clear profile pick, um, you know, you can get this professionally done. This is what Jeb does with headshots. Um, and, or if you're not going to spend the money uh, doing that, although I think it's worth the money um, to have, I don't know. How often do you think Jeb people should update their headshots professionally? If I try to take my bias of wanting more sales out of it, um, I think two years is the shelf life of your picture. And I mean, I recommend every year, but two years is probably the longest. A lot, a lot changes with your hair and your face and your style and everything over that amount of time. So I, I would keep that updated if I could. I have, um, I have an updated fact check for Ooh, everyone. Let's hear it you're actually 21 times more likely to get a profile view if you have an updated photo. Um, and you're nine times more likely to get a connection request if you have a photo. That makes sense to me. I think uh, usership has gone up over there. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of times the less curated your profile is, it seems like you made it 10 years ago in business school and have never looked at it since. So I wouldn't think that you were an active user, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, you can go and, you know, get it professionally done, um, which I think is a really smart way to do it. If you just are really, you know, on a budget, you know, ca our camera phones are great today. Um, put it on portrait mode um, and either do, you know, kind of a 
a nature background that would be kind of blurry in the background, or you could do a, just a solid white background as well. Um, those are kind of the, always the two options that I say. Um, I don't think that, um, I guess this might, this just depends on you and how you're comfortable. Um, you know, I don't know that you need it to be a super formal picture like suit and tie. Um, but if you're the type of person who, you know, loves, like my son is in the studio today, he wears a suit every day he comes into work and uh, puts all of us to shame. <laughs> he's, he's the style guru for us. But um, so I could see Luke, you know, doing that for his profile pic because that is him. Yeah. And what I always tell my headshot clients when they're, you know, kind of panicked about what to wear and all this stuff for their headshot session, I'm always telling them to be themselves, to pick something that looks the way they look daily in an office setting, not to um, go over the top. So you don't need a suit and tie if that's not the kind of uh, style that you are. And also, depending on where you're working, you know, if, if you're a creative and your field work involves wearing T-shirts, you can wear a T-shirt. The, the, it's better to look confident, relaxed, and approachable in your headshot than it is to look like you're doing a, an oil painting portrait. But if you wear a T-shirt, you don't want it to be worn. And have you seen that commercial? Yeah. Um, <laughs> where the guy is on a date, but his T-shirt is like completely worn. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You want it to be a cool looking, nice T-shirt. Simon Cowell picks, you know, from his closet of black T-shirts, like a nice, right. a nice <laughs> unfaded T-shirt with no mustard stains on it yet. That's right. So, um, then you're going to have uh, your name. Um, again, I really recommend that you go by the name that you actually go by every day. Um, you know, um, LinkedIn also has a really cool feature now that you can add um, the pronunciation of your name. Um, so if you have a name that typically people have difficulty being able to say you can actually create a voice recording of the pronunciation of it, um, which I think is kind of cool um, yeah. and nice to have. Um, and then underneath your name, you'll have a headline. Your headline um, has 140 character spaces that you can use. Um, and so there's a couple of different thoughts in how you want to do this. I personally have kind of my mantra and mission statement kind of wrapped up into it. Um, you know, so it's helping people thrive in life, career and calling, join the journey and get unstuck. Um, you know, a lot of times for our clients, we focus on kind of three marketing descriptors. And this is where I differ a little bit with your LinkedIn profile is that I um, am mindful about keywords within LinkedIn um, profile, but I'm not hyper focused on it. There's some people who's going to be really hyper focused about your uh, keywords um, because they'll say, you know, obviously the more keywords, the more you're going to get seen and found. Um, the reason I'm not as hyper focused on that is that there are some key data points within LinkedIn that um, are used on the recruiter license seat and and how it works in their algorithm to be able to, to share your profile out to recruiters and how recruiters find you. And so I think that if you have those set correctly, um, you're still gonna get found rather easily. Um, and that gives you a little bit more freedom to focus on your personal brand within LinkedIn. And so again, with our clients, we'll focus on kind of three marketing descriptors. Um, those might be a little bit more keyword, hard skill set. Um, so like business, uh, financial business analyst, project management. Um, you know, um, if I was thinking about, you know, um, kind of what McKay does, you know, it might include, you know, human resources, um, operations and strategic advisement, right? So there's a little bit of play and thought in that. Um, you can also go the route where, because you have the character space, 
you would be able to, um, you know, be able to use um, more of a, a phrase. Maybe you're just starting off in your career and you don't have any experience in the field. You might put aspiring to be and X, Y, Z. Um, so you have some room there. It, the headline is meant to kind of grab attention. And here's just the thing to remember about your headline. Your name and your headline always go with you in LinkedIn. So if you comment, like, share, do anything within LinkedIn, your name and your headline always go there. And what they will do in LinkedIn is they will default your headline to whatever your current job is, job title. And so, you know, if you're commenting on a post where there's a bunch of business analysts and everybody's got that job title, but you changed your headline to say something that grabs people attention, it's going to stand out amongst the crowd. That all makes sense? Yep. All right. Um, there's other information up in this profile section. It will typically list um, where you're currently working, your education, um, and you can choose to have that show or not show. If you go into that section, they give you a couple of different options of, of what you want to show and not. You also will see the location of wherever you are located. Um, so those are kind of the things um, in that profile section. Now, there's a couple of things that you may see that um, could be public or private. Um, and they kind of just put these in boxes. Um, so if you, it, it will show this kind of in a, gray dotted box that says show recruiters you're open to work if you don't have this start it turned on. If you get started on this, this is one of those data points that is going to take you to another page. You're going to be able to select up to five job titles that you're looking for. You can select up to five geographical locations that you're looking for. And you can select things like I'm looking for part-time, full-time, volunteer, remote work um, within that as well. So if you are in the mode of looking for work, uh, you'll be able to click on that and select those data points. Those data points are critical to select to help optimize your LinkedIn and being shared and how key jobs will be shared with you. You will also um, be able to decide whether you want that information to be shown publicly or only privately to recruiters. Um, and what I do know right now is that if you decide to put that on public view, um, what will happen even in your profile pic is they've created this little banner piece that says open to work, right? And so that's LinkedIn's response to people who are being laid off by COVID. Um, personally, right now, I actually don't recommend doing that. Um, I love the hashtag open to work because <laughs> again, from a marketing standpoint, and we, it tells us who to reach out to client wise, but I actually think you're more attractive, um, when you are not, you know, um, like showing that you're unemployed. So if you again, hit that public thing, not only is it going to show that you're open to work and that information it's also going to create this little green kind of banner in your profile pic right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. That's just something LinkedIn started literally just like two or three weeks ago. You can select all that information and just leave it private to you and to recruiters. Um, and so if a recruiter has a recruiter license seat, they're going to be able to see the information you selected, the job titles you're open to, uh, the locations you're open to, whether it's full-time, part-time, remote type of work. Um, but again, that's only going to be viewable to them. They would have to click on your profile to be able to see that information directly about you. So that's kind of the profile section. All right. The next section that you will see is the about section. The about section is where you can really deliver personalized marketing. So a lot of people end up copying and pasting just their executive summary here, which is boring, snooze <laughs> alert, right? <laughs> um, and this is a real opportunity to, again, put this into a first person narrative and really communicate, you know, um, who you are, 
where you are today and where you're trying to go. So we have um, four different questions that we ask. Um, McKay, what are those questions that we ask people? They are uh, coming right up. I should know these off the top of my head. I know. I was testing you. <laughs> Got her. I did. You did give me. I have not updated clients' profiles in I know you have a it. long time. <laughs> I am chief of staff, not Sorry. resume writer. Thank you very much. <laughs> not LinkedIn yeah, profile probably. person. So we have a LinkedIn worksheet um, that asks four key questions that you can uh, ask. Um, and McKay is pulling that up as we speak. So the first one is, what do you really enjoy doing professionally? The second is, what motivates you to perform your work and your role? What are your driving forces? And one of the things that we do with our clients is uh, we take them all through DISC. And when you do DISC, which is a like a personality typing system, and it helps you understand your behavior patterns, your driving forces, your motivators. Um, DISC will actually lay those out for you, um, which uh, I think is a really helpful tool. But I feel like you can still kind of look it over and figure out your driving forces if you don't have that tool available to you. Um, and then we talk about uh, your strengths. And finally, you want to talk about the difference that you could make to your future employer, which is especially important if you're actively uh, seeking for work. Yeah. And those four questions form a paragraph each. So you have 2,600 character spaces in this about section. So it's a real great opportunity, again, to really leverage your personal uh, brand here um, and communicate um, all of those things within it. You can also do kind of a call of an action kind of at the end of that. Um, maybe say uh, simply let's connect um, or do you want to learn more or if, you know, open to professional collaboration and networking, um, please connect with me. I personally also include my contact information. Um, there are other places they could get that on LinkedIn, but I like it just because it's, it, it's just there. It's a really easy place for people um, to read and to quickly access, you know, my email, my phone number. Um, I use Calendly for scheduling. So they have ways to get in contact with me and, and make appointments. So that that's is so scary to me because I think we have you up to like 3,600 connections on LinkedIn. So 3,600 people just have your cell phone number, which I could never do. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bit much for me. But if you're not comfortable with that, people can always message you on LinkedIn. So it's really a personal preference thing. Yeah, well, Jeremy, you're not getting a bunch of spam calls, though, are you? No, I actually, mm -mm, I've never gotten not, I mean, I'm getting a bunch of political conversation uh, phone calls right now driving me nuts. Yeah, but, um, but, but that's yeah, probably never, not from your about section on LinkedIn. Yeah, no, I, I have, um, as far as I know, I really haven't received a lot of spam calls. Um, so, but um, I don't know. I tell people, you know, I'm per, perspective clients, they know that that's my number and yeah. they can call or text me anytime. So yeah, makes it convenient. Yeah. So, I mean, someday maybe that will have to change for me, but you know, for now it really is kind of the number to go to. Well, lest we forget, there used to be this thing called a phone book and everybody <laughs> that's right. had access to your phone number just that's by right. picking that up. So it's not that big yeah. of a deal. And in traditional marketing, you wanted to name your business like Triple A plus resumes. <laughs> so yeah. you were at the, the beginning of the phone book. <laughs> a Can we rebrand? Can we be A plus resumes? I mean, with career brand story, at least we'd be like towards the beginning, you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So those are things to include um, in your profile um, and about section. Again, it's just a really great place to be able to leverage that personalized marketing and, and tell a different part of your story that people can grab that maybe they wouldn't have picked up um, just by looking at a resume only. Underneath that, you're going to have a dashboard. This dashboard is a little bit of a gray box area. It is only viewed by you. Um, 
and they tell you that they say private to you. Um, they'll give you, um, you know, how many people have viewed your profile. Um, if you've done videos, they'll show how many people have viewed your vo uh, videos. Um, and they'll show how many times that you have shown up in a search. So um, if someone's been doing a search, uh, you'll see that kind of increase. That's going to be based a lot on like keywords again and, and how people are searching for you. Um, so it will just give you some insight to that. Underneath that will be an activity box. So any recent activity um, that you have either liked or comment or shared is going to be shown in that box. Um, typically they show the last four um, activities that you did within LinkedIn. You can click see all activity. Um, so this is a good place to go to if you're trying to get back to or to um, you know see where you commented on something kind of quickly. Now they'll, they literally list every activity. So if you like a post and then you comment on that same post, that's like two different activities. So um, I will go back to that sometimes when I'm looking for something particular, I'm like, oh, did I comment on something? Uh, I wanna go back to that comment or that article that they wrote about. Um, so that can be really kind of helpful. Then underneath that is your experience section. This section is what should mirror uh, and be aligned with your resume. So it's the professional experience section from your resume. And again, it should be, and the way LinkedIn is going to do it automatically is in chronological order. Reverse chronological. Reverse yeah. chronological. Yep. So your most recent job is going to show first. Um, and so typically the best practice is for you just to copy and paste the accomplishments that you have in your resume and put over here uh, into your LinkedIn. Now, this is a social media platform. And so everything I'm saying here is subjective to how much you want and what you want to put out there about yourself. You have the control to decide what message you want to put out there about yourself. So I have some people who don't want their accomplishments listed here. And so instead they opt for maybe doing a paragraph about what they are doing there or what the company is about. That's okay too. Um, I don't think that's best practice. Again, I think putting your accomplishments, if you can, and letting people know what you've accomplished and the value you can bring to their company is going to be stronger. But I know that there's reasons sometimes, whether that's confidentiality um, or, you know, you're just personally not as comfortable with that, then I would suggest doing kind of that paragraph summary of what you do at the company. Because accomplishments really show this is what I'm capable of. Whereas when you put a paragraph of this is what I do, I mean, that's like we've said, you know, previously in other episodes, that's a job description and you don't need a job description on your LinkedIn profile. You need to be able to say to a future employer, these are the things that I'm capable of. Right. And some of it depends to um, on who your audience is going to be within LinkedIn. So if you go to my LinkedIn profile, I'm not out here looking for a job. Uh, my audience is to let other people know what I can do for them. And so I have a description of who and what our company is about. Um, I have a description about what the Career Brand Story podcast is about and how you can find it. Right. So it really does come down to your audiences. So if you're a job seeker, I really think best practice is to, to put your accomplishments. Um, and maybe you need to scrub out, you know, revenue numbers um, or some of those metrics um, on your LinkedIn and only leave those on your resume. That makes sense, too. Yeah. Same thing here is that you only need to list going back to 10 years. All right. So you don't need to have your complete job history here. Um, so if you worked, you know, at Domino's Pizza at a delivery job, delivery driver, you know, in 1992, uh, you might think about getting rid of that. All right. Um, so are you saying you know, that 
my <laughs> senior web and graphic designer position back in 2003 should maybe come off of my LinkedIn. Yes, it should. <laughs> it has no relevance today. Oh, <laughs> so yes. So things like that do need to come off of it. Um, again, if you go to my profile, what you'll notice is that the only job you'll see on there is what I do today. Um, that was a personal choice. Um, I didn't list, you know, that I was talent acquisition manager of North Carolina, special Olympics, world games, uh, global recruiter, um, for a large energy resourcing company. I talk about that up in my about section very briefly, but I did not mention it down below. I used to, um, but that was again, a very strategic marketing and branding decision because I only wanted to really be known as the career guy. Right. So that was just a, a decision that I made. Um, I had a, a, a person call me once and said, well, you didn't list any of this stuff. Um, you're, that's a real disadvantage. And I said, yeah, but you still called. <laughs> nice. Sick <laughs> so, burn. That's right. <laughs> so, um, but for most people, again, the best practice is to go back 10 years uh, in your work history. Um, so it, just align this section with your resume. Underneath that, you're going to have education. Uh, with education, again, you do not want to list your dates. So it does allow you to put dates, but I would recommend that you don't put dates. Um, Jeb, kind of tagging back on our last episode, you, you asked about, I, didn't, I went to school, but I didn't complete it. You could put the school here in the title, and then you could put in parentheses, um, significant coursework completed. So yeah. even on your LinkedIn profile, you could kind of put it in a, in a way that clearly indicates that, Hey, I went here. I have connections here. I did something with this, but it allows you to speak to it and, and in a truthful way. Yeah. That, that's what I did. Uh, I'm going to change it to what you suggested about significant coursework. Um, because right now I just have like the full explanation. It says, I don't have a degree because I left to pursue a career opportunity I couldn't pass up. Right. Um, you know, like on mine, um, I just have a, I just said Bachelor of Science. I didn't even go into detail of what that was. Um, I actually have a degree in music. Um, so, um, so you could choose. Music man. You could choose to, to put that. I, I didn't because, again, for what I do, it doesn't even really matter. Um, but I definitely would make sure that you don't have the dates. And the only exception to that, again, going back to the last podcast, would be if you're a very recent grad in the last year or two years, that would explain why you don't have job experience because you're fresh out of school. Yeah. And um, I believe I'm going to click on this section too because I'm pretty sure – it, it's you, making me have dates on mine. No. So what you do is mm -hmm. in the start year, you just keep it as year. Uh, the very top option. Fancy. So you just keep it as year and it won't put dates then. But you can put your degree, field of study. You can actually put your GPA in here. So again, if you're uh, you're looking for an internship, um, you know, may need to put your GPA and you can do activities in societies. Again, if you're a recent grad or you're looking for an internship, I definitely would spend a little bit more time filling out that section. Um, if you're past that, all I'm going to be putting is, you know, where I went to school and my degree and that's it. Cool. Underneath that, um, you have license and certification. So if you have obtained any license or certifications, you can list those. Uh, again, typically, I'm just putting the name of the certification and where um, or by whom did I get that certified by. Um, I'm not necessarily putting in dates um, unless it's a type of certification that is very hardcore about the dates. So there are things out there um, like different financial series you may need to list the date that it expires or mm -hmm. um, if you're a nurse, um, you know, um, but if it's not, I typically, I'm not going to list the dates there as, as well. Um, 
underneath that um, is skills and endorsements. This is kind of this weird section. Um, and here's why it's weird is people can actually like recommend you for different skills or endorsements, or they can come along and endorse you for things. Um, and so I literally have people that I have no idea who they are and they have endorsed me for things. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. And I find that weird that someone would actually do that too. Um, but um, so um, yeah, so it's just a strange thing, but there is some importance to this. Um, you can have up to 50 skills. Um, and so again, if you click on like the add new skill and you start typing in a skill set, it will actually give you a list of recommendations that they use. Um, and, and you can select that. Um, I don't think it's necessary that you need to have all 50 filled out. Um, but again, I think you need to have to think about hard skill sets. This needs to be like a strategic value. And when you're in this, you can also choose um, which top three of those skill sets um, do you want to be your top skills. And so if you click on the pencil, um, it will open up for you to be able to reorder your skills and endorsements. And it's kind of like a push pin symbol. So if you click on that push pin symbol, it will just drop it down into the list. And then you can go through your whole list and highlight your top three. Cool. And it will put it at the top. You also can reorder these. Um, so um, if you, on the, on the right-hand side of each skill, there's a trash can and then there's like the four lines, menu lines. And if you click highlight your mouse over that, roll it over, it gives you little arrows and then you can click and you can drag what order you want that those top skills to be in. Nice. I, I had no idea. I'm learning something. And so what happens with these top skills, the top three, is that it does affect how the jobs that are shared with you are shared with you. I just made that sentence really weird. But <laughs> uh, All right, So when you say, you mean like the emails we get that says such and such is hiring, am I, is that being curated based on my skills? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Or if you go and click um, at the very top of the dashboard, if you click that briefcase and it goes into your career page, they'll be sharing jobs with you. And like this ends up um, playing into that. Cool. Yeah. That's really helpful. The caution I have here, and I need to double check this. I know this was true, um, is that um, I don't know if they fixed this in development, but at one time in the last 12 months, this was not, um, um, shoot, I'm losing my mind. Uh, it is not a... Um, I don't. I've I, I've completely lost my brain on this. I can't even think of the words that I'm trying to say. It is not. It was not case sense. It, the case sensitivity to it. Yeah. Uh, like here, I'll give you the example. It was then, not case sensitive. Oh, yeah, I'm totally. I'm all over the place with this. But let's say that I I did um, talent acquisition and I capitalized talent and I capitalized acquisition. But then the recruiter who sets up a job uh, does talent acquisition, but doesn't capitalize it. It was not recognizing that I had the same, that I had the skill set. So it was case sensitive, sensitive. Something like is that, which was. is really crazy <laughs> that I don't know if they fixed that in development. I need to test that. That's again. not cool. Yeah. But just be aware that that can happen there. This is a kind of a loosey goosey section that LinkedIn has developed. Um, for that reason, and also for the reason that people can just endorse you for whatever and not even know you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they just feel like they're playing a game because it'll, you know, it'll come up at the top of your home feed and say, like, does Jeremy Tudor know about magazines? 
<laughs> sure he does. I, he's he probably does. seen one before. He's been to a doctor's office, I'm guessing. He loves cat magazines. <laughs> His favorite. <laughs> Meow. Cat fancy. Jeremy Tudor's a cat fancy expert. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a strange, strange type of thing. Um, they have like, I've never done the take the skill quiz. Uh, so they have it that set up. I don't know how that works. I've never done it before. Um, that could be kind of interesting. I have done one for Adobe Lightroom. And it was, a, yeah, a total quiz, seeing what I knew off the top of my head about Lightroom, whether I was, like, really skilled in it or whether it was just something. Or are you skilled? I've seen once. Yeah, yeah, I'm officially skilled in Adobe Lightroom. Did oh. it add those skills then automatically, or do, did you select them? It did. It added it. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, the kind of same thing here is that I, I encourage clients to kind of go through the skill section and just make sure that you're not putting random miscellaneous skills like Microsoft Office um, or really generic ones. Some people, people just have management. Leadership. Leadership. Yeah. I, development. Yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. I try to be very specific here and, and get away from the generics. Yeah. My magazine joke from a minute ago was pulled from from a literal skill in my listed in my skill set. Seven people have said I'm skilled at magazines. That's really funny. <laughs> Which, you know, I, I think what they're pulling from is that I'm a photographer and they're trying to use like industry terms, you know, because there's uh, portraits, advertising, weddings, um, digital <laughs> photography, editorial, which editorial uh, is what magazines are, but still <laughs> seven that's people fantastic. <laughs> say that I'm skilled at magazines. So thank you, seven people. Uh, yeah, that's why it's such a it's such a weird section. So <laughs> let me let me that's see fantastic. who said I was skilled at magazines. Okay, you're all safe. I was gonna I was gonna loud y'all out if it was one of y'all. Yeah, I don't typically I don't I I'd be surprised if I've endorsed you for anything because I, I just don't <laughs> in this section. Everyone else endorses me. I don't endorse anyone else. It burns. In this section. All right. So the endorsement section, yeah, it's just a weird section. Um, and I, I didn't mean to say that I, I endorse Jeb for his work. I love his work, <laughs> but I, I don't necessarily endorse people here um, because it's just a weird thing to me. So um, underneath that is recommendations. Um, I personally like to see people have anywhere between three and five recommendations. Um, you know, again, professional recommendations, people that you've worked with. Um, you can go and ask for those um, or people can actually come directly to your page and give you a recommendation as well. Um, so these are really good to have. Um, to be able to, to let people know, um, lend to your credibility of being able to work with you. And then there's just some other miscellaneous sections um, that can be added. You can add key projects, you can add accomplishments, you can add awards. Typically those are kind of down at the bottom of all of this. Um, you can also decide interests that you're involved in or things that you're following. And so it will list those down kind of at the bottom. Those are kind of the least important to me, but there are things that you can add in your profile. Cool. So hopefully that's helpful. I know that, you know, we're going through this on a podcast. Um, our plan is to do some LinkedIn webinars to kind of walk people through some tricks and trades of the tricks and trades. Tricks of the tricks trade. Of the trade. Tricks of the trade of, of being able to um, how to navigate, how to network and how to really kind of utilize LinkedIn. But I think this is a really great start in making sure that your profile is updated and that it's on brand. Hi, I'm Jeb Graff, producer of the Career Brand Story podcast. Today's career tip is all about simplifying your custom URL for LinkedIn. We're just gonna jump right into it. So you're gonna to wanna to open linkedin.com and log in, and then go up to the top navigation menu and click on your profile picture, and then click on the blue link that says view profile. 
That's gonna open your profile, and there you go, you see your profile. In the upper right hand side of the page, you're gonna see a link that says edit public profile and URL. Click that. That'll open in a new tab or window depending upon which browser you're using. In the upper right hand side of this new window, you're gonna see a section that says edit your custom URL. That's the part we want. Click on that little blue pencil icon to edit. Now you'll see that that is editable. Mine has already been changed, but if you've never done this before, there's a chance that yours shows the default that LinkedIn gave you, which was probably a string of numbers and letters that make absolutely no sense to any human trying to find you. And that's the whole point of this. We wanna make you easy to find for recruiters and hiring managers. You'll enter your name, you'll click the save button, and that's it. Easy breezy. Now you're much easier to find. It's much simpler. And my last recommendation about this is if possible, have this match across all your social media platforms so that you're really easy to find everywhere. Sometimes it's not possible, especially if you have a common name, but it's just an extra little tip. I hope today's career tip has been helpful for you. We'll see you in the next episode. Keep thriving. If you like what you heard today, you can hear more every week from us by opting into our email newsletter. Right now, we are giving away our free PDF on understanding your why, what motivates you, and your driving forces. Simply go to jeremytutor.com to sign up today. We promise we won't spam your inbox. We simply send one email each week with our expert career coaching. And by the way, if you're wondering where you can follow, like, and comment, you can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Just search for Jeremy Tudor and on Instagram at Jeremy T. Tudor. Also, while many of you listen to this podcast, because that is what a podcast is for, you can watch every episode on YouTube. Search Jeremy Tudor or Career Brand Story to find us. And McKay, where can everyone find you? You can find me on Instagram at McKay Leslie. That's M-C-C-A-Y-L-E-S-L-I-E. And on the same handle at LinkedIn. And Jeb, where can we find you besides longboarding down Main Street in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina? Ooh, longboarding <laughs> down your street, wherever you are. <laughs> now, you can find me on Instagram at Jeb Graff, J-E-B-B-G-R-A-F-F. And same thing on LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone, and keep thriving. If you're interested in advertising your business on our podcast, we advertise for local and national companies. Contact McKay at careerbrandstory.com for more information. That's M-C-C-A-Y at careerbrandstory.com.